Well, welcome back everyone again. Uh, today we're going to be going over subtracting integers. Uh, if you go to your extra practice in your book, it'll be number 22 I'll be starting with. Uh, well, with subtracting integers, it means that all the signs in between the two integers will be negative, uh, the subtraction sign. Remember, negative and uh, subtraction are really the same thing. It means on the number line, we're going to the left instead of to the right, okay? Because all the positive numbers are to the right of zero, all the negative numbers are to the left. So 13 minus 17, well, that would mean I went 13 this way, and then I went this way, 17. And the way we do that is, and going back uh, this way uh, to the left of zero, we see that we'll have 13 plus, let's see, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. How many did we go? One, two, three, four. So this would be negative four. And that goes with our golden rule. Uh, whenever two numbers don't have the same symbol in front, there's a positive 13 and a negative 17. We're going to take the bigger number, which is 17. We're going to subtract it from the smaller number, which is 13. And we're going to keep the sign of the bigger number. The bigger number was 17. So since it was a negative in front of it, our answer must be negative. 17 minus 13 is 4. And you see we got negative 4, just like we did with the number line. Let's go to number 24. We got negative 8 and negative 9. Well, if we use the number line, we see that we went to the left of 0, negative 8. And then since there's a negative 9, we have to continue going left. And that means we're going to go another 9. And if we count 8 plus 9, that's going to be 17. And that would be negative 17. Another way to remember this is if every time I borrow money, I put a negative in front. That would mean I borrowed $8, right? And then I borrowed 9 more. Well, 8 plus 9 that's 17. And because I still owe money, I have to put that negative sign in front. Let's go to number 26 now. Number 26, it says 15 minus negative 14. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. We have to remember that when we're minusing a negative number, uh, whenever we have a number out, uh, inside of a parentheses and a symbol outside of it, we're actually multiplying uh, negative 1 to that number there. So negative times a negative is a positive. Uh, if we remember that then, that uh, this is gonna make a negative and one times 14 is 14 still. So negative times a negative, that makes a positive. Now we have 15 plus 14. And 15 plus 14, well that's 29. And for those of you that find it easier to stack your numbers, you're still going to get the same answer. 5 plus 4 is 9, 2 or 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's go to number 28 now. Number 28 says, evaluate each expression if f is negative 6, g is 7, and h is 9. So f is negative 6. It says here f minus 6. So we're really having negative 6 minus 6. Well, once again, on the number line, we know that I'm going to the left, negative 6. And then because I'm minusing another 6, I have to go where the negatives are. And that's going to add another 6 onto that, which makes a negative 12. 6 plus 6 is 12, since both numbers are negative. We know our answer is negative 12. Uh, let's try number 30. It says G minus H. Well, G was 7. And we have to put the negative sign there. And now we have H, which was 9. So 7 minus 9. And if we use our number line, we see if we went 7, 
And now we subtract 9. Well, we have to go where the negatives are now. And now we've went 7, but we have to keep going until we get to 9. So 7, 8, 9. How many did we go over past 0? 2. And since this is to the left of 0, it's a negative 2. Our answer then is negative 2. Number 32 will be the last one I help you with today. The rest of them are for you to do. Uh, number two, two, 32 says 4 minus negative G. Well, 4 stays the same. The minus sign stays there. And that says negative G. Sorry, let me erase that. And negative G, well, G is 7. So that's going to be a negative 7. Now we have to remember that we have... Uh, a negative times a negative, which is going to equal a positive. So 4 plus 7. And uh, 4 plus 7, well, that's 11. And we're done. I have to apologize. I did not see that there was no, one more to be uh, worked here, and that's number 34. To find the percent error, you can use this equation. Percent error, the amount of error over the actual amount times 100. So the amount of error, okay, divided by the actual amount. So as Brian estimates the cost of a vacation to be $730. The actual cost of the vacation is $850. Find the percent of error. Well, it says the amount of error. Now that isn't telling you to put 730 on top. It's saying how much was he off by? Well, if the actual amount was 850, we will have to subtract 730 from it. Well, that gives us zero, and five minus three is two, eight minus seven is one. So the error was $120. So the amount of error is $120, and the actual amount well, that was $850, the actual cost. Round to the nearest whole percent if necessary. Is the percent positive or negative? Well, let's find out. We have 120. And remember, whenever we have uh, a line between two numbers like this, it's really a division problem. You see how a fraction looks like a division problem? except we replace the dots with numbers. So we have 820 divided by, or excuse me, 120 divided by 850. So let's work that out. 820 divided by, excuse me, 120 divided by 850 gives us 850. Let's try that one more time to make sure I did that right. 120 divided by 850. Ah, that's better. 0. 0.14. 0. 0.14. And it says uh, to the nearest whole percent. And percent is going to be uh, the first two numbers because whenever we do percents, we're moving our decimal over twice. And that's going to give us 14%. Okay. Uh, but remember, it says to the nearest whole percent, and it was 141, and we would round that one off, uh, and it would just be 0.14. All right. So uh, the answer to this question would be 14%. All right. See you, uh, see you in class. Have a great night.